The next one was to read a book that would you think is gonna. Hmm. Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey, and we're about to get very very nerdy. By May TBR. a mess outside. It is super gross and I am in the sunniest of shirts. So the weather didn't get the memo. So May is going to be a little bit of a weird month because I have so many plans for May. So an actual TBR is um, probably super dumb for me to do, but um, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> So May is going to be the month of buddy reads and primarily um, a reread for me because the month of May is going to primarily be a reread of the ACOTAR series by Sarah J. Mass. So this can be the first thing that is on my TBR. I'll mention it here. I'm doing it with my friend Taylor. She has read the very first one and that's it. As you guys know, I've read all of them and we are going to try to get through the entire series in May. We'll see if that happens. It's probably going to, I have a suspicious feeling that Silver Flames is going to roll over into June just because it's, I think these books are bigger and trying to get through them is going to be harder. But we are going to try to do the graphic audios, which is going to be, I think, longer. If I'm correct, it's longer audios because it's a full cast recording. But I have the first three, I believe. They have done the first three, but not Silver Flames. So we'll see. But that's the plan is to kind of read them graphic audio wise, get the full recording. We'll see what happens. But that's going to be like my major focus of May is going to be this series and rereading them. So yes, I've planned other things because I do have other video ideas and other things that I'd like to get to in the month of May. But um, this is going to be a TBR that I have very little belief that I will actually get many of it done just because I have too many ideas. But we're going to do it anyway because you guys know I love me a good TBR game and I am very excited to dive into what this month is going to give me. So let's take a look at last month first. So the first one was a Chris prompt. Um, my husband picked a book and it had to be a book that he bought, that we bought secondhand. So we got News Fail, which is a nonfiction. It's by Jamie Kilstein and Allison Kilkenny. Then we had to read a book with a POC author. So I did Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole. We did Fake Dating or Arranged Marriage. So I did The Bell of Belgrave Square by Mimi Matthews. The next one was Seasonal Cover. So I did a spring cover with the 10th volume of Dreaming Sun. The next one is to read a book that you think is going to make you cry. So I did Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. My pieces are falling out. The next one is a book that starts with one of your initials. I originally picked King of Immortal Tithe by Ben Alderson, but I didn't get to this one. So instead, I'm going to switch out Texas Destiny by Lorraine Heath because my maiden name starts with H. So I kind of maneuvered this prompt just a little bit. We had a book under 200 pages next. And so I did A Death at the Priory. And the next one, or last one, I guess, was Library Book, and that was Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco. So as of recording this, I usually do these videos relatively early. I usually do them within, like, a week left of the month, and I have not done that because as of recording, tomorrow is May. So that's not going to work. So the only one I haven't finished is News Fail. So I didn't get around to this one. I'll see if I can roll this one over into May as far as my nonfiction, because I don't have a nonfiction picked for May quite yet. So this one could be it. I could roll it over and see what happens. It's a pretty simple book if I just read it before bed. So this one might be a rollover, but this is the only one I haven't read, so I don't get to do any fun switches or anything for May. So let's dive into the TBR prompts and see see if uh, the basket is nice to me this month. I have all of my fingers and toes crossed. Pick number one. Ooh, a subscription book. Very first pick, I phrased really weirdly, but it's basically a subscription. Box. So a book that I got from a subscription box in some way. 
I'm including special editions because Fairy Loot does quite a few special editions that I buy, especially if they've done the first in a series and that came in just like their regular box. So I include special editions and I'm saying that because this one is a special edition and that is the Kingdom, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This is the second in the From Blood and Ash series, which I very much enjoyed the first one. I'm trying to make my way through it. I put this on so many TBRs last year that I'm just really hoping that this is the year of it. I don't know if this is the month for this, but this is the year. I'm going to make my way through this series, at least the first three, I swear it. Um, but this was a Fairy Loot special edition that I got the first three books in the series in this edition, so I'm counting this as a subscription box. This follows our main character Poppy, who is the maiden, and basically what that means is I can't remember if she's going to be sacrificed or if there's like basically what the synopsis says, but basically um, she's going to be given in some way to like the all-powerful gods kind of, you know, thing. Um, but in order to do that, she has to be protected. And so she can't be looked upon. She can't really have many emotions. There's a lot of stuff about her that is very um, structured and hidden away. And so the plot really gets started when she gets a new bodyguard named Hawk. And he kind of realigns her world a little bit and makes her rethink and change her opinions about some stuff. So there's some pretty big cliffhangers at the end of last, the first book. So I'm excited to dive into the second one. I have loved it, so I know I'm going to enjoy this one. So I don't know why I keep putting it off, but I keep putting it off. So this is going to be a book that hopefully May is the is the month for. <laughs> Pick number two. Ooh, a book that has an illustrated cover. The next one is to read an illustrated cover. And this one's a little weird because I don't own this one. And I honestly don't know much about what it's about. But it's The Off Limits Rule by Sarah Adams. This is a book that I've had on hold for the library forever because my coworker read it. And we have bonded over books as one of the things, specifically cute illustrated romances. And she read this one and loved it and really, really wants me to read it. And I've had it on hold from the library and it finally, audiobook finally came through. So I'm going to try to read it early in May. This one is, I think this one is a, like maybe brother's little sister, like brother, best friend, little sister kind of thing. I'm not making any sense, am I? Maybe I should look it up. So I was pretty close in my thoughts on this. This is honestly very similar to a Mr. Wrong Number. And it's basically our main character. She is quite broke at the moment. And so she moves in with her brother. And her brother's best friend is like very off limits. But she finds him really attractive. And it's that kind of relationship of like the brother's best friend. And then like the little sister. Like that kind of dynamic. Um, but apparently the tension in here is supposed to be amazing, which is one of my favorite things in romances. So this is one of the ones that I'm going to add. I'm finally going to get around to it. My coworker's going to be so incredibly happy, but this one is clearly an illustrated cover. So that's what I'm going to pick. Number three. Read a book with a tagline. The next one is to read a book with a tagline, and so I'm going to pick up, hopefully, Never Fall for Your Fiancé by Virginia Heath. Um, the tagline over here is being the first rule of fake engagement. It's Never Fall for Your Fiancé. Um, I have this book. I put this on this TBR a while ago, but something about this screams spring, and we are starting to get into some of the warmer months. Well, in theory, it's not been very warm where I am, but hopefully May is starting to get more into the warmer months. So like early summer and my summer TBR is going to start kicking off soon. So this feels like the perfect time to read it. It's a historical fiction. I love me some historical fiction. It's fake dating. It's arranged. Well, it's fake engagement, honestly, is really what it is. And I think it's going to be so good. And I'm not ready to be by Virginia Heath. And this has been on my TBR for a while. And there is a second one in the series. So I don't want to get the second one until I've read the first one. I'm trying to be better at that. So I need to read this so that I can see if the second one's worth it. So this follows our main character, Hugh, who is an earl. And his mother is convinced, like, she is trying to match, make for him, get him a wife. And he is so tired of it. So he basically invents his fake fiancé to hopefully let his mom just, like, leave him alone. And that kind of backfires when she boards a ship and decides to come visit him and his fiance. And so he basically runs into this woman named Minerva, who it sounds like on, on the back is not the same like 
social classes he is and she and her sisters are struggling for money and so he basically offers her to be the fake fiance and it says back here that um there's gonna be miscommunication and hilarities ensue so it gives me rom-com vibes like those old like 90s goofy rom-com and i'm so excited but set in historical times um so that's my pick tag lands right there it's also a cute illustrated cover and historical romance so like all of the boxes are being checked with this one number four Ooh, an anticipated book this one is to read an anticipated book and i'm gonna go with so this is a weird one because I, when I wrote this, I was thinking like, oh, books that are coming out this year that you're excited about. But actually, I'm going to rearrange this to work for just one that I really, really want to pick up like right now. And so I'm going to hopefully pick up Deadly Dreams by KJ Sutton, which is the third in the Fortuna Sworn series. It's as of right now, the last one that I own. So I need to get my hands on. There's only one more out and then the fifth one comes out this year. So I'm trying to like get caught up so that when the fifth one comes out, I can read it and I'm very excited, but that's beside the point. I'm hopefully going to get to this one. It's the longest one in the series. As I've been saying, these just get bigger and bigger. This one is just a little over 500 pages. I do have the audiobooks, which I am enjoying. The audiobooks I have are from Audible and those are quite good. But this one I think is going to be real dark and it's going to um, deal with a lot of trauma and mental health. So this might not be the most fun, but I'm so excited about the series and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm trying to dive into, I'm trying to dive into them while it's like all fresh in my brain. But this series follows our main character, Fortuna Sworn, and she is a nightmare, which basically means that she has this magical ability that when she touches someone, she can figure out what they're most afraid of and kind of create visions for them. And it's like her power basically um and the book starts with her brother having been missing for two years a lot of people have given up on him and assumed that he is dead she is not she is convinced that her brother is still alive and one day this fae shows up and basically offers her a bargain it says that he knows where her brother is and he can help her find him if she marries him so she does and it spirals from there it's a be it's like just a it's, I don't, fun is not the right word because like there's a lot of dark stuff in this book, but I'm having a blast diving into this fantasy romance and I'm really enjoying Katie Sutton's writing and I'm really enjoying the world that she has built and I am incredibly obsessed with the character of Fortuna Sworn and everything that entails with her. So this is really, really anticipated for me because I want to pick up this series like back to back to back. So hopefully I get into this one this month. So many fingers are crossed for that. We're fine. read a book with a dark cover. The next one is to read a book with a dark cover. So I'm going to hopefully pick up Bay of Sighs, which is the second book in the Guardians trilogy by Nora Roberts. I very much enjoyed the first one. So I'm hoping to dive into the rest of them this month. We'll see. I've got some video ideas planned when it comes to this series. So we'll see if I can make that happen. Uh, but the series basically follows six strangers who are searching for three stars. And this book starts basically with many many years ago there were three goddesses who in order to celebrate their new queen created three stars one of fire one of ice and one of water but they fell from the sky putting the fates of all worlds in danger and now three women and three men join forces forces to pick up the pieces so the first book followed the characters as they found the one the fire one this one clearly is going to be I think water but I've been meaning to pick this one up this is one of the series I want to finish this year so fingers crossed that I actually do but clearly a very dark cover and I'm just so excited so hopefully this month is the month that I dive into the rest of the series number six <laughs> read a hyped book everyone is talking about. The next one is a hyped book that everyone is talking about. Again, maybe a little bit of cheating because it's not, 
Well, heck, books don't have to be new. Anyway, that's the last book in the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan, which is The Last Olympian. I would say uh, clearly this is very, very hyped. A lot of people love this series. And I would say that a lot of people are talking about it now because there is a new TV adaption coming. So this is the very last book. We've made it to the end. And guys, I'm like very interested to see where this series is going to end because things are going on. This series follows our main character, Percy Jackson, who was a demigod, which means that one of his parents was a god. And so he ends up going to this camp called Camp Half-Blood, which is for demigods. And while there, they kind of, there are monsters out in the world, all of these kind of mythical monsters that are trying to get the demigods. And so the goal of the camp is to help them train so they can protect themselves. And then craziness ensues. And we are now at the end of the series. It's the fifth book. Lots of things have happened. And I am emotionally invested in Percy and his friends. So I'm interested to see where this series goes and how we wrap everything up because I've really been enjoying it. And then hopefully maybe diving into more by Rick Riordan because I do love me some good myth-based books. So, but this one's, I think, incredibly hyped. So that's why I picked that one. Number seven. read a book with a light cover. Okay. The next one is to do a book with a light cover. So reverse of the other one. It's kind of funny that I got both of these in one month and it kind of works because I'm going to use the third book in the Guardians trilogy, Island of Glass by Nora Roberts. So everything I said about the Bay of Sighs, same thing with this one. This is the third book in this trilogy. It's a light cover. It felt appropriate to use them for the dark and the light cover. So fingers crossed. This is the month that I finished this because they're not very long. And I remember getting through the first one really quickly. So it'd be really great to get through these two quickly as well. And number eight. Read a hardcover. And the last one, as far as my TBR goes, is a hardback. So we'll see if I can get to this one, fingers crossed as well. But that is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This is a Patreon book club pick for Ashes for Fall Through Fiction. This was, I think, one for G last year, but I'm hoping to do better. And I had it clearly on my TBR, my physical TBR. And so if I have it on my physical TBR and they put it as a Patreon book, I feel like I need to participate. I'm really hoping to get to this one. This month, I don't remember a lot about this, but it does take place. It says, A Forgotten History, A Secret Network of Women, A Legacy of Poison and Revenge. Welcome to the Lost Apothecary. So it takes place in 18th century London, and there's a secret apothecary that women across the city kind of go to um, because this woman named Nella sells it says well disguised poisons to use against oppressive men so like if they have abusive husbands or just are in a bad situation this woman will help them get out of it basically so it looks like it's going to be a dual timeline as well because it says that there's this 12 year old girl named eliza who um is going to be i believe her apprentice or something's going to happen with her and then it jumps and says 200 years later there's an aspiring historian who discovers the apothecary and is diving into what actually happened. So we're gonna get some dual timeline going on here. It's not super long. It seems like a nice little, I feel like it's gonna be fantasy as well. Like there's just something about this that gives me fantasy vibes. I don't know if that's true or if it's just historical fiction, but um, I'm interested to see where this goes. And it's a Patreon book club, which is a thing that I've been trying to do is participate in more book clubs. So fingers crossed that I finish this. That is the phrase of this video is just all the fingers crossed. And then a couple more things that I'm planning on reading this month. Um, I do have a couple more buddy reads. I have yet another buddy read with my friend Taylor because we can never have too many, honestly. And that is The Saint, which is the next book by Monica McCarty and the Highland Guard series, which is one that we've been buddy reading. It's a Scottish Highland romance series that takes place during wartime. It follows this group of soldiers that are part of this like secret guard for Robert the Bruce. And this is this is like real history. Robert basically was considered the true ruler of Scotland, but it's at that time where in the English king technically claimed Scotland as his 
like place to rule as well. So he was like the king of England and Scotland. And so it's at that time period where there was a lot of rebellion and a lot of fighting to figure out who should rule Scotland. And um, there is supposedly there was this secret guard made up of a bunch of men. And this series follows a different person in this guard each time. The books are their code names so that they don't get caught and their identities aren't given out. And this one just follows the saint, um, who is Magnus McKay. That is his real name. And he is called the saint because he refuses to discuss women. Ooh, so I'm curious to see about his, what this romance entails. I love a good Scottish romance. We'll see. I don't ever know a whole lot going into these books, what we're going to get, but that is one that I am also going to be picking up probably closer to the beginning of May, I'm thinking. And the other buddy read that I'm going to talk about, kind of add to this TBR, is my Lorraine Heath book. So we have been reading, this is with the group of the two girls that I did the Tessa Dare buddy read with. We are now starting Lorraine Heath's books. We did the first one last month, and so we're going to pick up the next one in this series, which is called Texas Glory. Um, this is a trilogy with a novella as well. So this is her first full-length series. It was written in the 90s. And we read the first one last month, and this is the next one. I'm interested to see where we're going to go because it follows a character that we met in the first one. So I think they're all companion novels in the sense of like most, you know, romance series are companion novels. But this one, I think, really relies on the first book for this one to make sense, just because, again, this follows Dallas, who was a main, main character. Um, he's the brother of our main male love interest from the first book and was a huge part in that book. So I'm interested to see his story. I think it's going to be so fun um, because he deserves, he deserves some love, you know? So this is a Western. It takes place in Texas. I feel like that was very obvious by the title. Um, it's very red tug Western kind of story, but I shouldn't like them. Because everything about me does not like westerns, but I'm actually very much enjoying it. And I love Florine Heath's writing style. So I don't know what we're going to get to with this one, but this is the next one in that buddy read. So I'm excited to dive into this one. And that's it, besides all the other books on the actor series, which I mentioned at the beginning. So that's a look at the books that I'm planning for May. Again, a very ambitious TBR. We'll see what happens and if I actually get around to reading the books that I need to read. So um, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of the books that I have mentioned or if you have any fun reading plans for May. I would love to know your thoughts on all of your planned reading as usual. Or if you're just mood reading, what are you feeling right now? What are you reading right now? Tell me all the things. But if you like this video and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So we're going to check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video.